All right, the timer has started. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Zach. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, I've been coming to RubyConf every year since 2014, so it's been a while. Um, it's still my favorite thing, one of my favorite things to do uh, throughout the year. So thank you all for coming to listen to me talk about this little project that I made. Um, I really appreciate that uh, we have a pretty full room. So let's get started. Oh, there's my voice. Um, man, is it nervous in here, or is it just me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, you might have been listening um, before the music came down. Um, the music was kind of like a chill uh, sort of instrumental with a beat under it. And um, that's what some may call uh, lo-fi hip-hop beats. And that's kind of what my talk is about. Everybody's familiar with the uh, YouTube playlists, I would imagine, at this point, right? Yes? No? OK, we're relaxing and we're studying to them. Um, so my whole premise was, can I take my favorite language, Ruby, and uh, make a tool to help me create little tracks like that? So I'm going to do a tiny little bit of typing, which means that I'm definitely going to uh, mess it up. So um, we're going to go ahead and pull the repo. Wow, that one got off to a bang. <laughs> um, can we can we clap too? Just to... um, thank you. And uh, as a reminder, that's not for me. That's for you guys. That's for all of you. So it's, uh... All right. So we're going to go ahead and clone that repo, and then we're going to jump into it real quick and do a thing. Um, as you can see, whoops. Uh, there's a zip file. I zipped up all of these sound samples because um, it was kind of messing with Git, I think, or something, or I got out of whack. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and unzip that. Okay? And then we're going to go back. So now we have um, our project directory. We have some samples in there. So rather than going with the uh, slides right away, which I have about a million slides that I hope we don't get to, um, I'd like to just go ahead and show you what it does. And, um, and start off that way. So we're going to say Ruby, Ruby Lo-Fi, and the classic app.rb. So the window is pretty small, but I hope that you can see the text is rather tiny. Um, it's kind of weird making a little app that then you expect people to like look at a big screen to, uh, to interact with. But anyway, we're going to hit new. This is a file browser. Um, it is a uh, UI element that we're all familiar with, but actually I had to make it myself because the graphic library that I'm using, Ruby 2D, doesn't have any more complex objects like file browsers, buttons, or, you know. So whenever you see me interacting with like a checkbox or a slider, um, that's something I had to make for this project, which is something I'll, I'll probably get to later. So let's jump into tracks and this interesting uh, track here. Uh, one problem, um, this is a single-threaded app. It, it doesn't do anything concurrently, so whenever you're loading something, you get the nice uh, beach ball. Um, that would be a good future improvement uh, to load things asynchronously. So now we have this kind of confusing jumble and mess of things. Um, once again, these are all like UI elements that I had to make for this project. Um, let's start at the top with the sample editor. Let's see if I can kind of move over here. Um, as you might be familiar, uh, that is a, uh, um, a track, an audio file represented in uh, waveform. If you've ever used Audacity or something like that, you're probably familiar. Uh, the next heading down is sample effects. As you might imagine, those apply effects to a sample. The third thing down says make a beat, and you see tons and tons of circles. Well, the rows of circles um, represent 16 uh, segments of one measure. So um, as you can imagine, every fourth circle represents a beat. One, two, three, four. And finally, track settings. And this is uh, probably the most confusing part of it, but we'll get to that. So if you've used Audacity or another music program before, you're probably familiar with selecting part of a, uh, of a larger track. And we're going to go ahead and do that now. Actually, let's wind it back a little bit farther. Uh, so I just dragged a little selection over a part of um, a larger track. And if you look at the bottom, you see a build button, 
there's lots of compromises I had to make in this first version of this app. Um, we already mentioned that it's single-threaded, so everything kind of blocks everything else. Another thing is that operations take quite a while because of um, the large arrays of numbers that we're using to represent audio. So um, when I had it working where any change that you made immediately built a new version of your track, um, it was very slow to the point of unusability. So compromise two, um, there is a build button, which uh, we're just going to go ahead and hit there. And we're going to see what it is that we actually selected. That's a little loop. You can see now, let's get to the complicated part, measures in sample. So if I have selected a sample right here, I can now say how many measures are in that sample. Right now it's set to one. I can set it up to four. You'll notice that the BPM changes when I move the slider. What does that mean? Well, the BPM, or beats per minute, is uh, fixed to the length of sample that you've selected. So the more beats that you have to fit into that sample length, obviously the BPM is going to change there. So 45 is, is kind of slow. Uh, let's set it to two. Uh, so now we have 91 beats per minute, and there are two measures in a sample. Pop quiz time. If there are two measures in a sample, and there are four measures in a loop, oh, I just forgot what I was going to say. I should have written that down. <laughs> I wanted to be clever. Um, I'll come back to it. <clears throat> measures in loop means how many measures are in a loop, and loops in track means how many loops are in a track. It's pretty straightforward, but messing with these sliders and standing up here trying to explain it is uh, kind of messing with me. So instead, uh, let's get to the beat part. Um, I just clicked down on this none, and we have all of these samples here. Um, you might recognize some of these names, 808, 909. Let's go ahead and add an 808 kick there. Um, we'll just kind of throw down a couple kicks here. Uh, let's pick another one. HHC, which is very creatively named. It stands for hi-hat closed. So we'll go ahead and select some circles. And then let's add one more thing, 808 snare. All right, so we remember what it sounded like the first time. Let's go ahead and build this. And let's play it. What we're doing there, actually, uh, through a Ruby gem called Ruby Beats, is um, <clears throat> taking all of these sound files these, and turning them into their arrays of numbers, which is how we represent audio in computers, and then layering them on top of each other. There's some interesting stuff involved that um, is handled in the Beats gem, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But other than that, I mean, um, we've kind of covered the basics of creating a little beat loop. Uh, there's one other checkbox that we can check. It's called swing. Um, when we uh, swing the beat, that means delaying the uh, eighths and sixteenths in, in every measure. Um, So we'll turn that off for now. We'll rebuild it. We'll hit save. We'll save that as a Z1. And we'll export. And let's say we want to get weird with it um, and uh, put some effects on it and slow the track down. Let's see what that sounds like. So that's kind of the whole tool. And uh, um, it took me about uh, two to three months to build it. Um, it's still very immature as far as uh, you know, good software goes. But I feel like it kind of accomplished what I was attempting to accomplish with it. Um, there's one other feature that uh, I could talk about. Let's go ahead and save this um, slowed down bit Z2. I made another tool called Stitch, and that just allows one to uh, add successive exported tracks and stitch them together. Um, you'll see a Stitch directory pop up on my desktop, and when we listen to that, um, it has all of our stuff. So 
my thinking there was to provide a way to stitch multiple smaller beats together. Um, I was hoping that after I talked for a while, I would like calm down a little bit, but it's, it's really not happening. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to like a uh, uh, flotation tank or something. So that's kind of the, uh, the application. And um, now it's time to get into some other things that I'd like to talk about as they pertain to this app and to other things in general. Um, and now I have to turn on display mirroring so that I can get the previews. Am I doing something weird like, uh, oh, arrangement. There we go. All right. And let's go ahead and play that. OK, so I just bumbled through a little talk about that app that I made called uh, Ruby Lo-Fi. Hi, my name is Zach. Um, as I have said, I made Ruby Lo-Fi. It's a project. Um, I have a very specific definition of project, and we'll get to that in a second. So this slide deck is going to be about that but it's also gonna be about you and your projects. I have a question. Do you have a project? Using my very specific definition, do you have something that's not work, that's for fun, for the joy of it, as Maps would say, to use Ruby? It's like a fun little choose your own adventure game. There's no requirements, there's nothing that you have to do can be like a fun little thing for you to experience. You can code it in any style you want. You can write tests or not. Um, you can be your own boss. But importantly, just relax and have fun with Ruby. When starting a project, we often wonder, how do I start? Where do I get inspiration from? Well, there's two scenarios. Either you have an idea or you don't. Let's say you have an idea. Is it a good idea? What does good mean? Let's re-reference that slide. Another definition of good might be thinking small. It's my experience. Uh, I am a serial starter of projects and an almost never finisher of projects. The smaller the project, the easier it will be to finish it. I uh, showed you Ruby uh, Lo-Fi. Um, it's not finished, but it does what I set out to have it do, so I think that was the right size. Maybe you should think, this should take me a couple weeks or months to finish, rather than, you know, it should take a couple years. Let's say you, your idea is to uh, take on Facebook head-on. The odds of finishing that uh, are, are approaching zero. But it's your choice. I mean, it's for fun. So that's the case of if you have an idea. Let's say you don't have an idea. You could ask people, do you have a problem I can solve? Or an idea that I can bring to life? This is surprisingly successful. People have a lot of ideas. But what if it yields nothing? Then what? I came up with a fun little game. It's not my invention, but I applied it to this particular purpose. Uh, turning random words into gems and kind of, uh, you know, giving up control to the universe. Let's see if I can um, get my uh, Chrome over here. This is a random word generator. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know what's going on. I, I'm kind of scared to click the button again. I, um, so let's say we, we copy this. Fool. Now let's go to Ruby Gems and just go ahead and, and uh, dump that in there. All right. It came up with some results. 
Does any of this look inspiring? Vodafone location, SAS color helpers. That maybe has some potential. What I'm saying is that you don't need to have an idea. There are uh, so many gems out there made by people who had an idea or you know, had um, a utility they wanted to make. And that can be your inspiration for something that uh, you can do. That's all I wanted to say with that before I got embarrassed by uh, the random word generator. All right, so once you have an idea, it's time to get started. I would like to talk about Ruby Lo-Fi real quick. I didn't make it. What I did was coordinate basically three gems. Ruby 2D for graphics, Ruby Audio for handling WAV files, and Ruby Beats for sequencing. So really, my job was quite easy, and um, I more or less accomplished it, but uh, let's, let's look at the internet for a second here. This is Ruby 2D. It's a uh, pretty simple graphics library that works extremely well for creating 2D applications. Gives you all the things that you need, rendering shapes, rendering text, providing a, a loop so that you can uh, handle mouse and keyboard interaction. If you have any ideas for creating a uh, desktop application in Ruby, uh, I would highly recommend Ruby 2D. Shout out to Warhammer Kid. Um, I don't know him, but uh, he forked Ruby Audio and turned it into a gem. And it's somewhat old, actually. Eight years ago, nine years ago in the commits, 14 years ago. Um, it uh, worked right out of the box for loading WAV files and uh, manipulating them. Let's look at Beats Drum Machine. This one is really cool. So this guy named Joel Strait makes tons of stuff. Highly creative person. Beats allows you to define a YAML file and a set of WAV file samples and sequence them into, uh, um, well, beats. Very cool. I can talk a little bit about how I use this later. Um, I highly recommend checking this out and some of his other apps. This, uh, I get somewhat envious of people who have this amount of creative output. All right, let's get back to the slides. What I mean to say is, on the shoulders of giants. That's where I am. OK, so when you're starting your project, you need to do some research, as I did. Look up gems, but not just gems. There's uh, concepts, things involved with your idea. For example, in terms of Ruby Lo-Fi, I knew I needed a normalization algorithm. Now, what does that mean? It's uh, a process by which you make a sound file as loud as possible without um, clipping it. And clipping means going outside of the bounds of uh, non-distorted audio. I didn't know what to do. Um, I sat down and thought about it for a little bit. How do I manipulate waveforms to stretch them without stretching them too far? I came up with a great idea. Um, and in fact, uh, I can show you right now very helpful person, jumped in like a ninja and dropped this uh, normalize algorithm. I messed with that a little bit. It seemed to work. What I'm trying to say is, outside of Ruby even, um, don't be afraid to uh, just dig deep and look up uh, subject matter related to your idea. That being said, let's see, we have about uh, 20 minutes left, so I better make this fast. I'd like to talk about two things that I dealt with a lot in Ruby Lo-Fi. Um, just to give you an example of uh, some of the stuff that went into my thinking. Let's talk about digital audio for a second. Um, it's not very mysterious. It's uh, not a magic box. It's just numbers. Here is an example of what I'm talking about. These are 13 float numbers. Uh, they range from negative 1 to positive 1. And, um, I roughly drew a curve that matches up to um, these values. So as you can see, um, at you know, zero on the left, imagine a midpoint line. At uh, 0 0.44, that's kind of our upper peak. Uh, negative 0 0.5, that's our lower peak. Um, that's really all audio is in your computer, is just giant arrays of numbers. Three concepts, real quick. Frequency, amplitude, and sample rate. What is frequency? 
one cycle per second. What's a cycle? Let's jump back to that slide. This is one cycle. It's a peak and a trough. So one hertz is one of these per second. That's too low for people to hear. A equals 440. Who knows what that is? Right, A above middle C, and it vibrates at 440 uh, hertz. So that is audible to uh, the human ear. Great. So now we know what frequency is. What's amplitude? It's power. Um, the most powerful peak we have is 0 0.44. You see up at the top there. And the bottom of our amplitude is negative 0 0.5. As I mentioned earlier, too much power equals clipping. We can only handle uh, so high of a number in whatever frame of reference we're talking about, negative one to one. So if you have like 1.2, you're going to clip. Uh, you don't want to do that. So frequency versus amplitude is count versus strength, i.e. the number of hertz versus the um, amplitude of those signals. Finally, sample rate is an important concept for computer audio. It means samples per second. Pop quiz. This one I actually know the answer to. What is standard CD quality sampling? Oh, he knows. You got it. It is 44,100 samples per second. So let's look back at this thing that I drew. This is 13 samples. I only need another 44,087 <laughs> to, to make one second of computer audio at CD quality. So you can imagine when manipulating arrays, like in uh, Ruby Lo-Fi, um, if I have a few seconds of audio and it's at 44, 100, I mean, dealing with hundreds of thousands of, of numbers to process, and that's what makes it slow. Uh, of course, people have solved this problem already, but, um, you know, for a first chop, I'm basically just dealing with the limitation of processing thousands or millions of uh, array locations. So, sample rate doesn't equal frequency, sample rate doesn't equal amplitude, you can have a 40, 440 hertz tone at 44,100 samples per second. Um, all very clear, right? This is a sentence. <laughs> Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> I think this is big enough to see. Can anyone guess what this uh, code block does? It uh, fades a sound from zero to whatever its max is. As you can see, we're iterating through every sample inside of an array of samples. For every sample, we're multiplying it by um, the index divided by the number of samples. Very, very simple, but this is basically how computer audio works. It gets more complicated, but loops of arrays. So now you're an audio expert. Let's talk about graphics real quick. <laughs> what do you need to make graphics? You need three things, probably more than that, but three at least. You need to be able to render basic elements, like lines, rectangles, and text. You need a coordinate system, uh, x and y for 2D, x, y, and z for 3D. Does that make sense? So you have a rectangle, that's x and y. If you have a rectangle that shoots into space, that adds a z. You need an update loop to handle input, redraw your graphics. You could always draw it just once, but then can't do anything with it. It's a picture. All right, so with those three things, we can make a graphical interface. For example, making a button, and I actually had to do this for, uh, for Ruby Lo-Fi. A rectangle for the clickable area, a rectangle for the border, text for the label of the button, and a click handler. This is a little smaller, but I think you can still see. Let's say we get an X and a Y from an event, and we have a button that says click me. Now to know if that X and Y are inside the button, it's pretty straightforward. Is X less than, uh, or is X greater than the button's X? Is it less than the button's X plus the button's width? Does that make sense? This is basically um, a lot of what the app does um, when dealing with user input is uh, detecting if I had clicked inside of something or not. And then everything else is just, you know now. All right, let's go back to projects. 
making progress in a project. This is something that I really struggle with. So let's say you're making something, but then it starts to get difficult. The easy stuff is done. The obvious stuff is done. Maybe you start to flail around a little bit. Maybe your progress looks like this. I have a lot of trouble staying on task. For example, Ruby Lo-Fi is about audio. So why did I spend way more time building like UI elements and the visuals rather than actually dealing with the audio itself? Adding more audio effects, making it function faster. I lost focus. I got really deep in the weeds. I don't have any answers to this problem, but I do have a suggestion. When you find yourself uh, straying from what you feel like uh, the correct path might be, stop working, show someone what you have, and ask for feedback. If I would have done this, someone would, might have said, it takes up to 10 seconds to load one audio file in your app. It's basically useless. And I would have said, yes, that's true. I should probably focus on speed before I make another like slider, you know, that kind of thing. Overall, though, um, as much as I've rambled in this talk, I think uh, you know, the overall thing that you should take away is um, code for happiness and code for joy. I kind of front-loaded the demo, so we really don't have to talk about that, although we can go back to it. I covered making a beat and stitching beats somewhat clearly, maybe. A couple things to remember about Ruby Lo-Fi. It only handles waves. You always have to hit the build button before playing or saving, because otherwise uh, it's too slow to use. Um, there are some keyboard shortcuts, but that's not really important uh, at this time. Here's the big thing, and um, I sort of am a little disappointed in myself because I wanted to have the app a little bit more um, complete for people to use. I think it's usable, but it's, it's borderline. Um, I wanted to issue a challenge. Uh, to everyone here. Does everyone know what socks is? Does anyone know what socks is? It's a uh, very useful command line utility that's sort of the standard for manipulating audio, especially in Linux, but on um, Mac and Windows too. I love this web page, by the way. This looks like, uh, like the old web. Um, this is the page. You can Google socks, S-O-X, sound exchange. If you want to use Ruby Lo-Fi, you need to have socks. It's a dependency that I couldn't figure out how to get rid of because it actually turns the audio data into sound. Um, and I did not have the ability to do that on my own. There is a download link here. <coughs> Who remembers SourceForge? That's still a thing. It auto-selects uh, you know, your operating system, so really it's a one-click install. If you want to try Ruby Lo-Fi, you do need it, though. Unfortunately. Next, I showed you cloning the repo. Robo Bluebird is my GitHub handle. Ruby dash lo fi. There's one other weird step. You have to unzip the sounds directory inside the uh, old repo. Um, it's kind of a pain, but. Maybe in the future you won't have to. I experimented briefly with serializing all of those samples into just a big data <coughs> chunk, and then deserializing it. Um, couldn't get it to work. And then you run it. Uh, you run the app.rb, and you can make a beat too. I think the interface is pretty straightforward, but it has enough little like unprofessional qualities that it might be difficult to use. Although I would like to say, if anyone has the uh, wherewithal to download this and play around with it. I would really appreciate it. Um, if you make something with it, you can send it to me or tweet it. I don't know, can you tweet audio? I think you can. But I did pick up specifically for this purpose um, three, uh, they're knockoffs, but they're still the real deal. The Amazon special, as I, um, as I like to say. Here they are. I'm not lying. Little Nano. MRubyC is still too big to fit on a Nano, but there's another project called MMRubyC. If anyone saw the MRubyC talk yesterday, 
someone took that and made it even smaller. And actually, you can get a little Ruby uh, program to run on an end. Um, if anybody wants to try Ruby Lo-Fi, but you don't remember all of these like uh, kind of stupid steps, I would um, I would love to uh, help you out. Um, and obviously, the app needs work. If this seems like something interesting that you would like to work on as well, um, I would appreciate the help. Um, I can uh, you know give you the the repo name again if you need it, but never really collaborated on a hobby project before. So if anyone looks at it and they're like. It's a good idea, but nah, here, let me help. I would appreciate it a lot. Um, that's almost all I have. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. Before we uh, go to the question round, um, I do want to say that my company uh, did send me here. I really appreciate that. And I have to have the obligatory um, off-theme slide. I work for General Dynamics in Pittsburgh. We do a lot of interesting things with large data sets, turning it into useful visualizations to help people make decisions and plan things. Um, we're hiring at all experience levels, beginner up through senior principal. Uh, I think we still have some positions open for like DevOps and data scientists. Uh, I've only worked there since April, but uh, it's been good so far. I am in this picture on the hot metal bridge in Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't remember where, though. So anyway, I have business cards. If anyone has an interest in living and working in the Steel City, please let me know. And that actually is the end of my presentation. Uh, yes? Can we just hold up my feet? Sure, yeah. Um, and the, the cool thing about it is uh, when you deconstruct some of the stuff that you hear like on the YouTube stream, um, it's, it's really quite simple. Of course, it's better produced than this would be, but um, the idea is the same, taking four or eight bars of music, putting a beat under it, and, and going from there. Um, unfortunately, I only prepared one example file, and this is actually from uh, Majora's Mask, if anyone uh, recognized that. Um, so here we have to get a little uh, spinny ball again. This is the biggest problem to tackle right here, if I ever want anyone to use this. Let's kind of just select a, a bit of audio and see what we found. <laughs> There's a better part right here. Let's try that. Go ahead and add, uh, let's add a, a fat kick underneath it. Let's add a little snare. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we're running at 154 right now. <laughs> We can uh, notice how when I change the number of sample or measures that are in that sample, it changes the BPM down to, well, we don't want 38. Let's go for 77. That's nice and chill. Let's add a little delay to that and really like space it out. Floating down the river of stars. And that's the idea. Um, you can use any, any uh, track you want. I <laughs> the steps to making a little loop are actually uh, fairly straightforward once you deal with the uh, the weirdness of it. Um, so I'm very serious about this. If you, if you want one of these, make a little track and send it to me. I will ship it to you if I have to. <laughs> That's a threat. No, it's not. It's not.
Uh, that's all I have. Thanks again. <laughs>